Hello everyone and welcome once again to an edition of the Pikeville City Commissioner's Report. I'm Shannon Deskins bringing you another informative show with one of our city commissioners and today it's Commissioner Barry Cheney. Nice to be with you today. Nice to be here and be with you today, Shannon. It's been a while since you and I have got a chance to talk. It has been and I'll tell you what, uh, we've had uh, quite a bit happen since we have talked. Uh, You've been a busy man. The city has just been a, a busy place, a hopping place to be. Oh yeah, uh, and uh, especially this agenda today. It's, it's probably been three years in the making and uh, I'm very excited to talk about it. You came in with a smile on your face so I knew it was going to be a good show. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Coming off of Labor Day weekend, uh, we have been looking for a year, looking forward to the big Hatfield-McCoy Heritage Days, and it happened. And I hear, because I was actually out of town and it broke my heart not to be able to be here, so I'm going to rely on you to give us a recap of how it went, but I'm hearing all good things. Uh, it, has, it was very positive, very fun weekend, very well attended event, and uh, all we had everything going on. Started out Saturday with rain, rained our motorcycle. Uh, group out, but uh, it picked up from there. Uh, vendors were were very happy uh, when they left. They they all said they would be back. Um, Jenny Wiley Theater. Uh, they had a special showing of their their plays Thursday night, and it mm -hmm. was very well attended. Uh, Friday night was sold out. Uh, Saturday night and Sunday night they had to turn people away. Wow. Uh, everybody kept talking about it, and it just kept getting bigger. Uh, so the thirst for the story is not going away. People are still coming in just wanting that information. Oh yeah, and, and the, the writer that, that wrote the, this play uh, to, took a particular part of this story where John C. Hatfield was taken prisoner by the mm -hmm. McCoys and Roseanne had ridden all night to uh, Devil Lance Hatfield's house to warn him that John C. had been taken uh, captive and it was her coming to uh, so they just took a small part of the story. Oh yeah, yeah, very well done, very well done. And sometimes that's neat to see because in in the miniseries they only had so much time to they hit the high points. Yeah. So it, it's nice to see these productions that actually take an aspect of it, or it maybe even be a 36 hour window in the entire feud, but you know everything that happened. Yeah. Well, you know what was uh, what kind of was surprising and, and kind of probably added a little bit to it. The uh, writer of the play knew nothing about the Hatfield McCoy feud. And oh, really? he, he, he just relied on what he had, what they sent him to read. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was an outsider's view of, of what actually happened in this particular event. And it very entertaining, very well done. The actors are all professional, mm -hmm. uh, did a great job. You know, and sometimes getting that outside view um, because you know we've all heard the stories and and you'll get your local historians and your local people who tell the story and they're very passionate about it but it's their story the one that they know and they believe but when you take somebody outside and you say I'm going to give you this information this is the factual information you put it into a play and sometimes that's a better way to do that. Oh it is and that, you know there's a little bit added here and there. No, oh, well, have, it's yeah. entertainment. It is. It's always it is. that way. Um, but the vendors, you say, seem to be really vendors happy. were happy, and then uh, things really revved up on Sunday. Uh, they had the car show. Uh, the good old boys brought all their cars out, and mm -hmm. we had cars from uh, Tennessee, West Virginia, Virginia, Indiana. And, do, uh, do you think it was a farther draw than your normal muscle on Main? I mean, was it? Did you see new cars that you we don't did, normally see? We did see, see new cars. Uh, like I said, those out-of-state cars. Some of those we hadn't seen before. Uh, and you know there was, uh, you know there was an excitement uh, uh, about it. The cars were very high quality. Uh, mm -hmm. Brett uh, Wagner, who was there from uh, Pastime on Speed Channel, oh yeah, uh, okay. he he went around looking at the cars, and he was very impressed with what the quality of the cars that we had. And he said they they could show anywhere a lot of those cars could, uh, especially the the truck that won the. Uh, uh, best of Show, which was mm -hmm. the first time a truck had won the Best of Show, was a 30-something. Uh, uh, oh wow! Uh, Plymouth that, or a Dodge that uh, a man named Rodney Johnson from up B5 had rebuilt, and uh, he'd taken a couple of years to do it. And well, it, that's it, that's not an easy or a quick thing to do. Oh no! And then we we had another local boy here that had uh, that was in stiff competition for that. He had a all original 68 GT500 Shelby Mustang 
I, I oh, mean, wow. that is a that is a unbelievable car. I, I would be afraid to try to price that. That's you sound like a car guy. I well, mean, I, you're I spitting love, those out like you just knew exactly what that was. Well, I, when I was I was young then, Shannon, I always wanted one and never could oh, afford okay. one. And I still can't afford one. So I <laughs> not one of those like that. It seems no. like they're more expensive now than they were. I when think they were brand new. I think that he told me that he had been offered two hundred thousand dollars for that car and turned it down. So that's that's way out of my price range. I think that's a way out of most people's price range. But it's I guess that's nice for him to know that he has something that that's his baby and and that's the way it is for a lot of these cars. I mean the, these the, your good old boys car club and the other people who bring their vehicles in. I mean these are these are like their children. Yeah. And if you watch how they set them up, I mean a lot of times they'll have the mirrors underneath them. I mean they're spotless inside and out. So that's really neat to see. Yeah, and well, a lot of them, you know, work on them themselves and refinish them mm -hmm. themselves, and it's, you know, it becomes a part of them, a lot of it. Uh, now, you had something new to what your normal car show is during that, and you had the drag races in had, the river we had, field. We had the drag races in the river field. Uh, Kent Rose and Arm Drop Nation mm -hmm. came to, he calls that the river field arena. That's well, you can. Uh, I see why because you've got the bank there yeah. that people can sit on, like uh, the Coliseum or the arena. Oh, and they were they were all over the place. Uh, you know, the, some people said we had probably six thousand people. I heard several uh, thousand packed up around there, and uh, uh, I tell you, he just uh, uh, our Kent and uh, and Brett, they just interacted with the crowd, interacted with the drivers. It was a very entertaining thing. You could see. Uh, Camaros, racing Mustangs. Uh, 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 I guess everybody would kind of in their mind pick their favorite before it, it and, and this is I think it's what twenty twenty dollars maybe for for anyone to come in and bring their vehicle and race. Right, right. So it, it wasn't like you guys brought these professional vehicles oh, in. No, anybody uh, could have raced. Yeah, anybody. You know, I just had to show proof of the insurance mm -hmm. and uh, driver's license and you were in the race. And uh, you know the uh, diesel truck actually came in second. Uh, uh, you know that really surprised everybody, and uh, I'm telling you, it, it's it was something. That guy said he had a thousand horsepower in that truck. I don't know. Wow! And it was still street legal, I guess. Yeah. Well, I guess. Well, how are we to know? And yeah. we're not going to question it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but that's a lot of horsepower. It is. But yeah, next time that comes back around, I'm sure that everybody's going to want to see that again. Well, uh, it is going to be coming. I'll get in that, get to that in just a second, but. Uh, you know, and then on Monday we had the mm -hmm. parade, but we also had the tough cuss Russ uh, race. The cuff, yeah, the tough yeah, that's, cuss that's a tough race. Twister. I've seen pictures from that. I've got friends that ran it. Yeah, that, that well, was I an awesome I thing to see. Uh, I didn't run in that, so, but it was uh, very well attended. 164 runners entered that. That's a popular trend now. It's yeah. it's you still have your 5K races and things like that, but it's these your tough mutter is another one that they yeah. do. Um, so hopefully this one in Pikeville, I think, I've talked to the guys, they're going to start trying to do that every year. Yeah. And uh, you, I guarantee that these endurance races with the, the, the mud and the ropes and the things you have to jump, they're getting very popular. Yeah. So it, it's awesome that Pikeville got in on that right when it's, it's the big thing. Oh, yeah. And uh, I may try to get in shape and running that myself next year. I think again. I'm going to try it, too. <laughs> you and I can partner up, and who cares if we bring up the rear. And they say it's not about how fast you finish. It's about finishing. Yeah, well, you know, I don't want to finish last, then, and I'd like to Just, be up You can knock me to the side, and then you can walk ahead of me. <laughs> okay, I'm with But all that being said, in a nutshell, Hadfield yeah. McCoy Heritage Days 2013 was a great success. It was. It was. And, you know, I, I had so many compliments uh, about it, and I've heard so much about how much people enjoyed it. and. Uh, uh, especially the arm drop drag races, uh, and that's that's coming back this weekend. In fact, uh, this Muscle on Main weekend, uh, they're going to have the uh, block party with the good old boys cruising in at the uh, Giovanni's Pizza up beside the Landmark Inn, and they'll have uh, music there. And then uh, Saturday they'll be cruising in downtown and uh, be uh, uh, setting their cars up and. Then at five o'clock, they're going to do a few burnouts, I think, and then uh, more drag racing. More drag racing. Uh, uh, like I said, Kent Rose and Arm Drop Nation are coming back, and uh, uh, he's he's a character. Uh, he's a character. And everybody everybody really seems to enjoy him. Enjoy him. And uh, his wife Sabrina calls it vengeance in the valley. 
So uh, if you got beat last time and you want to want vengeance, issue a challenge. Come on back up. Okay, uh, and hopefully m maybe when everything starts again next year, because we're kind of wrapping up the season now for the for those type of things. You do it? Are we doing it again in October? We doing it again in October, second okay. week in October. The block party will be at Jerry's restaurant that night, okay. and uh, and we're going to we're going to race again that night. And uh, you know, so if you miss the the arm drop drag races that are coming up really soon and by the time you're seeing this it may already be over with but in October they're going to do it again so make sure yeah. that you uh, watch and listen to your local radio and newspapers because I'm guaranteed that it'll be advertised. Oh yeah yeah and uh, uh, Jeff Coleman of City Tire he always does the uh, burnouts for mm -hmm. us and he's been with it and uh, you know I tell people he saved my life uh, because the uh, uh, when I was down there, we were just getting started in that. I was down there and I was trying to hold a motorcycle back so it could burn out. And I went up and saw him the next day and he said, uh, I'm going to take this over for you to oh. save your life, he said. Uh, so you're going to get run over. <laughs> Gladly you let him have it then. Yeah, I did. So it, it was good. Well, good. And that's sort of like a recap of something that just happened. But let's kind of switch gears just a minute and look forward to a lot of things that are happening now in the city and getting ready to happen. One of those, I guess, goes into both those categories is the whole commercial air service that's oh, yeah, yeah. recently been announced um, coming to Pikeville. It's been a scary probably 12 to 18 months of funding issues and, and support issues and things like that, but you guys just made the announcement that oh, yeah. it's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll tell you, we, this has been a history with this. Uh, you know what? Well, actually, you know, if you go back to 1964, the Appalachian Regional Commission, when, when they did their study, they they identified isolation as the reason as the reason Appalachian counties had not enjoyed into the in the prosperity of the rest of the nation. So isolation creates poverty. Uh, so the more that we open our area up, uh, the better for the people that live here. Uh, you know, even over the years, I can remember, I think Donovan had a Courier-Journal uh, article uh, from maybe 68, 69, mm -hmm. that identified the need for commercial air service. Uh, in the 80s, there was talk of commercial air service, even the 90s. Um, 2008, there was an attempt to get commercial air service, and in that, we were in a supportive role. Uh, we did everything that was asked of us, and uh, we, that's, well, that's the reason we annexed the airport was to provide emergency services in case we didn't get it, because a commercial flight has to have emergency services on site, present, 30 minutes before the flight, 30 minutes after. So that's, that's why we, we annexed that airport uh, then, and uh, in 2010, uh, you know, we, we were ready and ready and uh, very comfortable and would have been very happy to have stayed in a supportive role to write letters of support and be a cheerleader and uh, you know try to get people to uh, to support it but uh, you know circumstances changed a they did bit. circumstances changed and uh, uh, we were asked to step up and uh, be the government entity to uh, apply for the commercial air service grant and uh, uh, be a partner in this to get it done. Uh, mm -hmm. Then you had the uh, Pike County Chamber of Commerce that during all this became the East Kentucky Chamber of Commerce. They expanded to, I think, 364 businesses to, to support. And, uh, I think it's eight counties yeah. that the regional chamber serves. Oh, yeah. And every one of those are going to benefit. Oh, that, well, actually. that's, you know, that's one of the reasons they were able to get 200 letters of support that mm -hmm. they were able to present uh, that went along with the uh, application for the Community Air Service Grant. And uh, I, I can't say enough about a young man named Jerry Arnett. Uh, He's a hustler. Oh, he is a hustler. But, you know, Shannon, not only that, uh, you know, he's a free will Baptist preacher. Uh, he's I've a, heard that. He is. He's a very accomplished preacher and uh, preaches a, uh, quite a bit. He's popular in Floyd County and Pike County. So, uh, uh, you know, he's a very, very good young man. Uh, uh, I tell you, and very knowledgeable young man, and a UPAC graduate. So, uh, everything he, that we're looking to have here, you know, a local graduate and very educated guy, and smart and easy to get along with, and and very motivated. Oh yeah, and and another guy that that I want to particularly re 
recognize is Bill Hickman. Mm -hmm. And the uh, thing about Bill Hickman, when we were looking at him and thinking about putting him on the airport board, uh, I went to his former boss and I asked her, I said, uh, what about Bill? And she looked at me, she said, Barry, I'll tell you. I said, he's the best corporate lawyer this side of Lexington. And I said, wow. He said, yes. And she said, yes, he is. And I'll tell you something else. I'll put him up against anybody in the state. So That's I thought saying that, a lot. That is saying a lot, especially this lady. I, I know who you're <laughs> yeah. talking about. And yes, it is. Yeah. And uh, I, another gentleman that I have a lot of confidence in, uh, I asked him about him. He worked with Bill. And he said, uh, Bill will not lie to you, that he'll tell you the truth. He'll not only tell you the truth, but he'll tell you the way things are. He won't tell you what you want to hear. But he'll tell you the way what things you need are. To hear. Right, and uh, he was he was very high on him. So uh, you know, I was I was all for. That was my recommendation, Bill Higman. And you know, the the uh, we didn't appoint him to be chairman. That was something that the Pike, well, Pike County uh, board members mm -hmm. did. So they they elected him their chairman. So they recognized that. And you know, actually, that board. Uh, you look at Bill Higman, uh, Lyle Blackburn, who's a investment guru, mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Sashtiva, who's a very well-educated man, community service-minded man. Now, probably the only person I know more community service-minded than him would be his wife. Who both of the Dr. Sashtivas oh, yeah. are. They are wonderful people. I know them both. Yeah, and Jack Sykes, who's probably been in uh, uh, just um, probably almost every project in Pipeline, Pike County for the past 25 years. Uh, Greg Johnson, very accomplished businessman, mm -hmm. very intelligent man, and uh, Mr. Wagner, he's a businessman from Phelps, and uh, I don't know too much about him. He's new on the board, but uh, that's a that's a board that I would probably trust with anything. Uh, very very knowledgeable, experienced group. And they've worked just as hard as you guys to. They you did. know, there's so many different people who have worked to bring this into the region, and you know, you hear stories. In the past few years, when, when the commercial air thing has come back around and really this push has happened, you hear so many people saying, we've tried to bring new business yeah. into the region, and they like the sites. They like the land, the, a lot of the mountaintop removals. We've created so much flat land and usable yeah. land through that. And you get so far in a conversation with one of these businesses until the topic of commercial air yeah. and the airport comes in, and they, they just they don't want anything to do with it after that. So. Do you see this as a just, I mean, other than com providing the service to our, our residents, well, a lot of it is, is a business draw now that will open a door that was previously well, closed. That, that is part of it, uh, Shannon. And, uh, you know, going back to where we were thrown into this role, uh, you know, what, what made this even more of an emergency and, and more uh, of, uh, of uh, something that had to be done was the FAA had been shortening other runways. They shortened the Boyd County Airport. And, uh, you know, we, for us to keep the length of our airfield, that would still let most of the jet, or all the jets that land there now still land, so a bunch of those wouldn't been able to land if mm -hmm. they shortened that. So, uh, uh, commercial air service fends that off, and, you know, they won't shorten it now because we, we're going to have commercial air service. Uh, but that, that made that equally important because, you know, a lot of businesses may have pulled out if they couldn't land landed their jets mm -hmm. here. And, uh, you know, that was a concern for us. Uh, kind of had us panicked a little bit. And, uh, but uh, that will be something that will be, in a, be a draw uh, for us and uh, something that we can use. And I'll tell you something else that we can use, Shannon. Uh, and uh, not too many, you know, we, we haven't talked about this too much. But, you know, the coal industry, the downturn in the coal industry has left us with a lot of land mm -hmm. that has rail access, that has three-phase power. Uh, it has left us with a, a workforce. You know, people look at miners and you, you, you think of a pick and a shovel, uh, but those guys work with uh, high-voltage electricity. Those guys work, that mining equipment is sophisticated machinery. Uh, you know, and, and they are, they are. They're very highly educated and highly skilled. Yes, highly skilled and hard workers. Yeah. Uh, you know, well, I think we had uh, Toyota actually advertised for miners to come and apply. Um, well, you know. they know the work ethic that these guys, men and women, I mean, no. there are women also in, in the mining industry. But, but and, and the hardworking 
people. Yeah, and to, you know, uh, there's, a, there's a skill there. And something that we're also forgetting, Shannon, is that we have catalogs mm -hmm. in our market. We have catalogs in our market. How many, how many towns and cities and counties around this country would love to be able to say, we've got catalogs here. They provide 400 jobs. They mm -hmm. provide uh, uh, middle, income, middle income jobs. They provide uh, health benefits. Tremendous job. Uh, uh, you know, who, you know, I don't understand why we've not used them, you know. Uh, it's true. You know, not, not to take advantage of them, but. Hey, I know what you're saying. Kellogg's here. You know, they, they not only make the strawberry pop tarts, but when there is a specialty flavor of a, of a certain time of year, they also make that. And I think they may be the only factory that makes the frosted Pop-Tarts. They are. They are. So if anywhere, if you're, you're having a frosted Pop-Tart, you know it was made right here in Pike County. Yeah. And when they make the Pop-Tarts to go to Europe, mm -hmm. this is where they make them. That's awesome. Yes, it is. And, uh, uh, yeah. One more point I want to make before we get off the commercial air thing is, you know, we talked about attracting businesses, but for those of us who, who do fly, you know, sometimes you think, well, you, you're going to go to a small airport and you're going to get on a plane, you're going to give them your bag, and then whenever you land, you have to get your, at a larger airport or right. a hub, you'll right. get your bags back and have to recheck them. That's not the case in Pikeville, and that's one of the most attractive things that I've found is you go in, you will go into the Pikeville airport just like any other airport. Absolutely. You'll check your bag one time. Right. And until you reach your final destination, you won't see that bag again. Right. And that's been something that I think hasn't been said a lot. It's those little conveniences that, that make it worth doing. Well, you know, another convenience is you can get on Travelocity. Mm -hmm. Travel Velocity, I hope I said that right. A travelocity. Right, and you can, you can uh, get your ticket there. And like you said, when you buy that ticket, you don't have to go land someplace else, go buy another ticket. It right. has all your It's a through right. ticket all the way. Right all the way through. Uh, Nashville? Pikeville to Nashville, correct? Pikeville to Nashville, and then from there you can go anywhere in the world. That's a huge airport. Yes, so. it is. And the, it, is, it is the lowest priced airport in the nation, by the way. Southwest uh, West Carolina flies out of there. And so it's a, it's a cost-cutting move as well. And uh, from what I understand, Luke Schmidt, which I forgot to mention him a while ago. Mm -hmm. that, uh, that's a, Very instrumental in yes, getting this whole project yeah, going. Yeah, and uh, Donovan Blackburn, don't want to forget him. Uh, but uh, You know, you talk about Luke Schmidt and Donovan and all kinds of other people that have been so instrumental. I guess we can't name them all. No. Um, but it's just been a huge project that's been so many years in the making, and we are coming down to the time that we're going to do a ribbon cutting. We are. We're going to do a ribbon cutting. The, uh, the, the plane will be there. Uh, it's the pl all the planes are going to be brand new, mm -hmm. uh, all leather interior, uh, bathroom. Nineteen seats, nineteen passengers. Nineteen, 19 passengers, and uh, just a just a, a top of the line plane, uh, short takeoff landing plane, and uh, climbs faster than a jet, uh, and so it's uh, it's a, a beautiful aircraft. Uh, Hal Rogers is going to be there. You'll be able to get on there and see the the aircraft yourself. Um, and I hope Luke Schmidt's, Schmidt gets yes. to come. I, I, I would enjoy I've seeing heard him, him speak again. about this project several times, and he's very knowledgeable. Yeah. So, but, but before I forget it, you know, he said that this, this project, this uh, commercial air project, will probably wind up being something that will be patterned, that other cities will pattern their services after, because it is, it is uh, something that's not been done before. Mm -hmm. And it seems like we've been having a lot of that here in Pikeville. But uh, this not is not a bad thing to say. Oh no, it, it, it's this is uh, something that's not been done before. The way it's laid out, going to Nashville, and the the, uh, the connections and the way you do that, uh, and uh, the uh, all the uh, air industry is very high on it, from what I understand. So once again, that's October the seventeenth is the right. ribbon cutting for the new airport. So the Pikeville Pike County Airport, come out and see that um, ribbon cutting. You can view the plane get a good look at it, and as Barry said, they're all brand new planes. Oh, yeah, so, yeah. Well, I'm sure you and I will, next time we meet, we'll talk about talk about what happened on that day. But we're down to just the last few minutes, and I think there were a couple other things you wanted to touch on. One being, real quickly, Pikeville Commons. We are almost ready for a groundbreaking there. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's it's been a little stressful, but it's going to be so good when it's finished. Well, you know, I, this, 
I, th I think this has taught everybody patience and uh, but I know, think from what I've seen and what I've heard it's worth waiting for it is it is very much worth waiting for we're going to be we're going to be signing contracts next week mm -hmm. and uh, everything will be go from there we're going to have a, uh, a groundbreaking ceremony September the 23rd and uh, 11 a.m. I think 11 a.m. and uh, come down and you know, we're going to be celebrating, Shannon, because this, is, uh, this has been tough on us. There's been so many little hurdles from, you know, having to move the fire station to having to move the post office and construct a new post office, right. um, just to some little things, but I think it's all been worth it. And, you know, I've seen the drawings and I've heard and we've talked to Donovan, we've talked to you and, and then Jimmy Carter also, another commissioner about it. Oh, and yeah. just, we're excited to have all of that oh, coming to Pikeville. It's going to be fantastic and, and the concept of putting the 200 apartments in there and uh, you know that's that's going to be a little little town of itself community within itself yeah and you you wait and see a lot of people are going to want to move in there uh, uh, they're already taking taking names for, they for, are, the, for the apartments I've been asked uh, there yeah. may be a waiting list I've heard rumors of a waiting list I don't, I don't know, know but then I was asked uh, several months ago if I could uh, help uh, uh, couple get uh, get an apartment down there and I, I gave them the uh, Mrs. Blackburn's number I said uh, me and Mrs. Blackburn's mm -hmm. number at AAA Realty and uh, but uh, yeah there's uh, quite a bit of interest in in those apartments and the reason they were wanting is because of the convenience of you're not going to have to drive to a lot of your stores and things in that entire area it's very community I mean very family friendly yeah. you can walk you can exercise ride your bike so oh, yeah. we'll be talking about that also as we go forward. Um, but one thing I know we talked about before we got started was Pikeville Station 3. Um, yeah, you're getting ready to move, start construction on the new fire department uh, right off of the boulevard, between the boulevard and the, the um, where you go up to like Bob Amos Park. Right, and uh, we, we, are, we voted on a uh, five-year million dollar construction loan. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll be signing papers on that and constructing the fire station there. Uh, and so that that that'll be done very soon. And, uh, and as soon as Station Three is 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 ready, and then you're going to start construction of the new post office, and all that kind of stuff's going to start real soon. Too. Well, the, the the Station Three and all that we have to evacuate the day of signing. Right. Uh, the day of signing, so we'll have to tarp some of those trucks and just keep them ready. Uh, but uh, but all that's going to happen fast. It is. Uh, it is. And. Uh, Another little project that I don't want to forget is uh, Jenny Wiley Theater. Uh, foundations mm -hmm. live and poured. We're going to see steel there in three weeks. Uh, coming along very well. What, are you still looking at March 2014? Uh, March 2014. Uh, so just yet another reason to bring people from outside the area to yeah, Pikeville. People will be able to fly right into Pikeville and go to the theater. And then in the last minute or two that we've got left, I know the city has three new police cars. One passed me the other day and I thought, who is that? And it was ours. Yeah, it was. And we've got three new ones. We're going to order three new ones and uh, they'll come and still have the same color scheme. And before I forget, I want to recognize Joe Sloan, Officer Sloan. Uh, we he had a rest. He did. He had some, uh, we had a guy that, that broke into some vehicles uh, during Hatfield McCoy days and uh, stole some private uh, or some stole uh, iPads and such. Mm -hmm. And uh, Joe went to Extra Mile and uh, saw this guy and, uh, you know, he's just uh, followed his gut feeling and uh, went to Extra Mile. And got the merchandise back. Got all the merchandise back and uh, they told the story at the commission meeting about being able to give the iPads back to those, uh, some children. It doesn't happen very often. No, it doesn't. And, you know, I'm going to warn people, you know, whenever you come and you leave your car, don't leave your valuables in plain sight. Uh, because if uh, crime starts when you've got a target of opportunity, motivated offender, and a lack or absence of a capable guardian. So if you don't leave that target of opportunity out, uh, chances are they won't break in your car. That was a good tip to give as we wrap up this show. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, I think Shane. we could have gone probably another half hour, but next time we're around we'll make notes and oh, okay. we'll hit this stuff again. Well, maybe we'll, we'll talk to the guys here and maybe we can get another half hour there you go huh. but until then i think we're going to wrap up now but thank you for joining us thank you shannon 
And thank you for joining us for another edition of the Pikeville City Commissioner's Report. I'm Shannon Deskins for Pike TV.